everybody, it's Lisa here. So today's video, I'm gonna talk about self-compassion and why self-compassion really is key for full recovery. And one of the main reasons for that is because eating disorder can't really thrive in self-compassion because it's quite impossible to keep up with those disordered and harmful behaviors in an environment of self-compassion. So self-compassion is like one of the doors that will lead you to full recovery. And it's very important to note that self-compassion won't get rid of like those hard moments but it changes how you deal with it how you feel how you respond to it and all of this is gonna have a positive effect on your recovery and this is everything we're gonna talk about today and if you want to know more about recovery check out my book everything i did to fully recover from my eating disorder and also on my website you're gonna find a few online courses about recovery and how to go through it step by step and please like this video if you find it helpful and also subscribe to my channel and now let's get started with today's video so what is self-compassion self-compassion means being warm and understanding to ourselves when we suffer when we fail when we feel inadequate rather than ignoring our pain or talking to ourselves with harsh criticism self-compassion means treating yourself like you would treat your best friend we recognize that we are all humans so it means that we all make mistakes we all suffer we all fail sometimes but this doesn't mean that we are now somehow not good enough or unworthy so instead we offer ourselves kindness understanding and support in those hard times and one of the leading experts in self-compassion field is dr christine neff and uh, she also has a book about self-compassion but i also recommend this workbook about self-compassion it's very practical there are many exercises that guide you along the way towards like a more self-compassionate relationship with yourself so i definitely recommend her book and the workbook as well and there are actually three elements to self-compassion self-kindness common humanity and mindfulness so let's look closer what each of those mean firstly self-kindness it means speaking to yourself like you would speak to a dear friend speaking softly and warmly rather than with harsh criticism you realize that being imperfect and experiencing difficulty is part of life and it's normal and rather than getting frustrated with yourself you offer yourself kindness acceptance and empathy for example saying things like i am doing the best i can and it's enough or i'm a good person despite this moment of suffering the next part of self-compassion is common humanity this means acknowledging that suffering is part of human experience most people experience suffering in their lives so you are not alone pain is part of our shared human experience that actually makes us all connected because when we experience suffering then most often it's even more painful if we believe that we are all alone in this or that this means that there's something wrong with us but when you acknowledge the common humanity part of self-compassion realizing that we all suffer we all make mistakes and nobody's perfect it helps us to connect back to our heart and to validate our feelings instead of feeling somehow unworthy or broken for example saying things like i'm not alone in feeling this way or i'm having a human experience and the third part of self-compassion is mindfulness this means being open to the present moment the thoughts the emotions the feelings without resistance or avoidance and rather than resisting or trying to reject part of ourselves we can instead hold it in mindful non-judgmental awareness because we cannot ignore our pain and feel self-compassionate at the same time but mindfulness also means that we are not overly identifying with our thoughts or emotions we know that they are part of being human but they also don't make you bad or somehow unworthy and when we mindfully observe our pain we can acknowledge our pain without exaggerating it without ruminating over it or taking it personally and some examples of mindfulness in self-compassion could be things like saying i'm feeling sad right now and knowing that it doesn't mean you are somehow bad or wrong or broken but you are just acknowledging what you're feeling but not making it mean something bad about you or for example saying that i feel bad for not passing my exam 
again expressing just like what you're feeling but also knowing that this doesn't mean that you're a failure so next let's talk about the self-compassionate phrases i really recommend you to maybe write down some self-compassionate phrases and put them somewhere you can see them you can read them every day maybe on your closet door or maybe on your mirror or maybe on the wall behind your work desk so you can start to surround yourself with those positive messages and it will help you with your mindset how you speak to yourself and it will help you to rewire your brain and some self-compassionate phrases can be saying things like it's a moment of suffering i'm not alone in this everybody makes mistakes and nobody's perfect it's a human experience it's okay to feel this way i'm doing the best i can in these circumstances i'm struggling today like so many other people may i be kind to myself in this moment may i give myself the compassion i need so these are just some of the examples and as you can see they all come from kindness they also acknowledge the common humanity part of self-compassion and also they are mindful about what you're experiencing and in recovery if you struggle with self-love then know that self-compassion can actually be just as effective and also it's a skill you can build and practice so it's something very practical you can learn to do and it will really help you with your mind mindset in recovery also helps you with how you feel and what actions you take and therefore affecting what results you're getting and also don't expect to do it for just a few days or even just a few weeks and then get frustrated when negative thoughts still keep popping up remember it's gonna be a process and also enough repetition and time is needed so those new neural pathways can be rewired so be ready that it's not gonna be perfect you're gonna have your ups and downs but over time you're gonna absolutely see the changes with your mindset and with your thoughts and even after full recovery it's not like we're never gonna have like any negative thoughts or hard moments this is just life this is how we are this is part of human experience but with learning about self-compassion and practicing self-compassion towards yourself what's gonna change is how you're gonna treat yourself in those moments how you speak to yourself how you react and act in those moments and this is something that's gonna make a whole difference and it's gonna change everything and this is why self-compassion really is the key for full recovery as i said earlier that eating is can't thrive in an environment of self-compassion because those harmful behaviors and thoughts can't persist when we have self-compassion and even when you can't control what you feel or what thoughts come up you absolutely can control how you respond and how you treat yourself and that will actually make the biggest difference so this is it for today's video i really hope the video was helpful for you self-compassion is key to full recovery i couldn't be fully recovered if i didn't have self-compassion so don't underestimate what this can do for your recovery so thank you so much for watching and also please like this video and subscribe to my channel and i'm gonna see you next time bye